This is a lecture by Farol Kalemi from George Mason University. It is narrated by Ungad Buttar. This is part one of a two-part series on hazard functions for combination of causes. The purpose of this lecture is to help you think through multiple causes for an event and how these causes interact with each other. It starts with showing you how to calculate the risk to a person over a defined period of time. For example, we would like to estimate the probability of dying from cancer within the next year if the person has lived till now. These types of estimates of sentinel events over time are referred to as hazard functions and are fundamentally important in calculating risk of sentinel event from a specific cause. We then want to move on to multiple causes and discuss the relative contribution of a cause to an effect. As we will show, again, hazard functions are useful in calculating relative contribution of a cause to an effect. Finally, the lecture shows how to estimate the total effect of multiple causes if we know the effect of each cause. A definition, a few definitions will be helpful in setting up the method of analysis. To analyze a joint effect of two or more causes, we need to have a function called hazard function. Before we do so, we need to define several terms that are used in the calculation of a hazard function. We begin with the simplest concept, the probability distribution function. This is a probability that the event of interest will occur at time period t. The cumulative distribution function is a probability that the event would occur to or at time of t. It is easy to calculate the cumulative distribution function from the probability distribution functions. The cumulative distribution function is the sum of the probability distribution function for current and prior time periods. Survival function gives the probability of surviving till after time period t. Note, the survival function is a complement of cumulative distribution function and can be calculated as 1 minus the cumulative distribution function. Now, we are ready to calculate the hazard function. It is defined to be the probability of an event occurring at time period t given that it has not occurred prior to that time period. The hazard function is calculated as a ratio of the probability distribution function and the survival function. An example will demonstrate. Suppose we know that a hip replacement surgery will last at most five years. Furthermore, suppose in the absence of any other information, we estimate that it is equally likely for a prosthesis to fail in any of the next five years. Obviously, this is an over-implication as a prosthesis is more likely to fail in later years. But, for the sake of the current example, let's accept this simplification. In real situations, the yearly probabilities can be estimated and used instead of equal yearly probabilities. Under assumption of equal yearly probability, the probability of it occurring in any one year is 1 divided by 5, or 0 0.20. Given this distribution, we want to understand what is a probability that if the prosthesis has not failed for two years, that it will fail in the third year. Or, more broadly, what is the hazard function associated with each of the years? The next step is to calculate the cumulative distribution function. We need to calculate a sum of the probability for the current and prior years. Note that this is a cumulative probability in the immediate prior year plus the probability distribution in the current year. These numbers suggest that the probability of the prosthesis failing either in year 1 or in year 2 is 40%. The survival function is 1 minus the prior year's cumulative distribution. Probability of surviving the start of year 1 is 1. 
the probability of surviving until the start of year two in this example is 0.8. The probability of surviving till the start of year five is 0.20. Note that the survival probability or the chances that the prosthesis will not fail decreases with time. Now we can calculate the hazard function. This is the function that calculates the probability of the event occurring this year, if it has not occurred in the prior years. This calculated is the ratio of the probability function and the survival function. Note that the hazard function increases each year as the more of the prosthesis does not fail, the more likely it will fail in the remaining years. So now, we can answer the question asked earlier regarding what is the probability of the failure in year three if the hip replacement has been successful in years one and two. The probability is 33%, significantly higher than the probability of failing in year three, which is calculated to be 20%. Try your hand on a problem of your own. Suppose that a cancer patient is equally likely to die at any time between zero to three years from now. What is the hazard function for this person? You can solve this problem by assessing the probability distribution function, the cumulative distribution function, and the survival function, and finally the hazard function. Process with constant hazard rate have a Poisson distribution. Even when the hazard rate is not constant over time, it is, it is a constant value at any particular time, and therefore, the Poisson distribution can be used to measure it. In these circumstances, any sentinel event can be thought to of having a Poisson distribution and arriving for the first time after t periods of time. In this sense, the Poisson distribution allows us to estimate the probability of a ev sentinel event of occurring in the next time period given that it has not occurred so far. The Poisson formula calculates the relationship between the probability of a sentinel event occurring in the next time period based on the event's constant hazard rate, h. Note that e to the power of the hazard rate is the probability that the event will not occur during the time period. 1 minus this is the probability that it will occur. The Poisson formula can be turned around to calculate the hazard rate. Solving for h, we obtain a way of calculating the hazard function from the probability of occurrence of the sentinel event. This formula is commonly used in many risk analysis because the Poisson process allows the interpretation of a hazard rate as the count of arrivals of a random event. Since the effect of multiple causes can be counted and added together, then this interpretation allows us to add and subtract hazard rates to estimate the effect of multiple causes and constraints. For example, if poor training and fatigue interact into each other to increase medication error rates, then the combined hazard should be used in estimating the combination of these two causes and other causes. So, if we want to estimate the effect of poor training, fatigue, and similar bottles, then the co combined hazard rate is equal to the hazard of poor training, fatigue, plus the hazard associated with similar bottles. It is also possible, though very rare, that we have the estimate for the combined effect of several non-interacting independent causes. In the absence of any other information about the relative impact of each cause, the hazard associated with each cause could be estimated to be equal. The take-home lesson for this lecture is that hazard functions are key to understanding relative contribution of multiple causes to sentinel events. Please use the course website to ask a question and rate this lecture. This lecture will continue with a discussion of hazard function at different sources.